Hello, Mayor Beer and City Council members. My name is Juliana Wool. And my name is Ollie Grass. And we are both students at Oceana High School. And we will lead our Ocean Conservation Club. As two passionate students eager to protect our environment, we are in support of the updated reach codes for the new building construction that would enforce electric appliances in new buildings in Pacifica. As students, it's difficult for us to make an impact on climate change. We don't have the opportunity to see the electric cars on campus or the solar panels in our house. It's easy to feel helpless, and this reach code helps make an impact at a local level. The 2017 study by the City of San Mateo showed that buildings in San Mateo are responsible for as much as 42% of the city's total greenhouse emissions, which is almost the same as emissions from transportation. We don't have the same data for Pacifica, but it's possible that emissions from our buildings could be just as high. The number of greenhouse gases that our community contributes could be drastically lowered by the implementation of this REACH code. We need to act quickly. Or climate change becomes irreversible if we continue our current rate of greenhouse gas emissions. Implementing this REACH code will help reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and move us one step closer into solving climate change. I think that it's also important to note that this REACH code does not in any way force people to immediately switch to using all electric appliances, so those who cannot afford the switch will not be affected. This REACH code would allow people to contribute to a healthier climate just by changing something that will ultimately benefit our world in the future. The next generation of families in Pacifica, with kids like ourselves, could see the effects of energy conservation. While we understand that restaurants in Pacifica may be exempt to some parts of this reach code, we are still able to prevent the construction of gas infrastructure. As we lead our school's Ocean Conservation Club, we really enforce doing what we can to help protect the environment. If a group of teenagers are able to come together and protect our environment, the city of Pacifica can too. Arwen and I will be the next generation responsible for maintaining sustainability. While so much damage has already been done to our planet, there's still work we can do to combat that, starting with changes in our everyday lives. If the city of Pacifica is willing to pass this REACH code, it would support any of today's youth. It's important for Pacifica to update our current REACH codes to make sure we, as a city, make a difference. Thank you all for your work and your time. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Okay, so do we have an interruption in yeah. service exactly. at the moment? No TV. Do we need to stop? I mean, well, we don't need to stop. Okay, so maybe before we go to the phones, we might want to ask for like just 10 minute, more minutes on the meeting just in case. I make a motion that the meeting ends at 12.15. Second. All right, we can go to the phones. Is there anyone on the phone? We have two people. Um, we have the first number ending in 0 2 and the second number ending in What was the first one again? 0262. 0262, if you could, star 6 and unmute and mute any background sound. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, hello, can you all hear me? We can. Great, thank you. Um, my name is Dasha Leeds. I'm the conservation organizer for the Sierra Club Lumber Prieta chapter. Uh, we recognize that it's a late night and possibly early morning soon. So um, we hope you adopt the REACH code tonight. Um, we hope that Pacifica prioritizes the adoption of the first reading. Um, we do have a small clerical um, change to the code that we recommend. This is something that Margot already mentioned in her public comment. This is just aligning the language between um, sections 4.106.5 and section 5.106.13. Um, the language in question uh, is um, uh, 4.106.5 um, reads, uh, it lists out a, a number of different types of uses that um, buildings cannot be reconverted back for using gas. And it, it ends that list with and appliances or any other purpose. I think that's really strong language. And in 5.106.13, which effectively has the same function, um, it ends with and appliances. And it doesn't contain the words or any other purpose. So we just recommended uh, including the words 
or any other purpose to add that to section 5.106.13. Um, and given that this is largely a clerical change, um, we're hoping that you can make this change and still proceed with the first reading tonight. Um, but if it comes down to it and, and making this change would somehow delay the first reading, we hope you actually don't do that. Just let's move through with the first reading. So thank you so much. Um, this is a great reach code. Uh, we really hope Pacifica passes it and um, onward to exploring more partnerships and solutions and funding for building electrification. So thanks so much and we hope you move forward. Thank you. And, and our next number is 3097. Okay, Remy. Hello, uh, Ramey Tan with the uh, uh, again architect specific manner and also former member of the Green Building Task Force. Um, I um, uh, applaud the City Council and staff when um, uh, moving forward with the REACH code. Um, this is really important um, to to make sure that um, we're addressing um, climate change and we're in line with uh, other cities and state as far as um, as far as green building is concerned, um, so I'm, I'm glad to see uh, you know there's you know EV charging put in. I think we probably do need to have more of that, considering um, um, every year it comes more and more EVs, and I think it's I'm not speaking mentioned by 20 20 30 um, all the cars need to be EVs, and you know I agree that. Uh, affordable housing, especially in lower income housing, needs to have more charging instead of less because those folks are probably end up with the older EV models that have less range. So it's even more critical for those folks to be able to have access to uh, charging. And um, um, I'm not sure why there's a exception for restaurants. Um, the um, technology for um, induction cooking is getting better and better and um, and you know, I even saw a really nice run out in IKEA and I, I know there's some chefs that are already using it so um, seems like there should be no exceptions and especially for developers and builders if you don't have to provide the gas um, that saves a tremendous amount of money and you don't have to have uh, an extra PG&E service which is very difficult and expensive and time consuming to get. Um, you don't need all the inspections on the gas line, gas meters, um, and you know, you save a lot of money as a builder. So, you know, I don't think we should have any exceptions for for, for gas moving forward. Um, so really, you know, overall I'm glad that I'm doing this and I can plug staff and council and hope um, you guys all approve this. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Remy. Is there any other people on the line? Okay, we're going to close public comment and bring it back to council. I did hear some changes that were requested. Maybe we can talk about those. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, with respect to the uh, desire to make the all electric building um, conversion requirements consistent between residential and non-residential, uh, that makes perfect sense. That was a, a drafting oversight on our part. And so the intent would be to add or any other purpose to section 5.106.13 to match the similar uh, language in 4.106.5. Uh, we could make that change if the council desires. Sure. Um, the other one um, to be considered uh, is deleting residential from section 112.4.2 two B Romanet two it's the utility undergrounding that was a an old um, text left over when the ordinance was initially drafted to apply to residential only we broadened that and missed that reference to okay. residential so deleting that would uh, align with our recommendation very good thank you so much Christian councilmember Beckmeyer so Maybe, maybe not. Uh, really, the reason for that is that uh, we carried forward the exception that was in the 2019 REACH code to align that as closely as possible. We didn't receive direction from council to explore alternatives to that. Um, 
you know, I think the, the real reason um, that that exception exists is that certain types of food preparation can be very costly when using all electric heating appliances, or at least that was the thought. Um, and Peninsula Clean Energy staff previously has relayed that to me. Um, it's unusual, but there are certain types of food preparations that are not cost effective using all electric cooking. And that was the, the rationale behind that initial exception as I understand it. So keeping the word for profit in there gives more flexibility. Well, I, it would narrow the exception. Uh, I don't know uh, of any nonprofit restaurants in Pacifica. Perhaps they exist, I'm not aware of them. Maybe the thought is related to more institutional or religious organizations and their cooking facilities. And so perhaps replacing restaurant with cooking facility, but again, that's an undefined term that's perhaps not commonly understood. Uh, I think the potential misapplication of this is limited in my judgment, and perhaps the council could make that adjustment if some unforeseen issue were to arise, which I think is unlikely to occur. Please. Okay, so on packet page 301, and then uh, again on a later point in the packet, there's a reference to the appeal process, and it's uh, on the on packet page 301 that appeals should be heard before the Emergency Preparedness and Safety Commission. I'm looking specifically at paragraph 3 where it says, notwithstanding any other provision of the Pacific and Municipal Code, the determination of the commission shall be final and binding. Does that mean it's not appealable to the council? Yes. OK. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Well, I think part of the rationale, Council Member Beckmeyer, is that um, the code looks to have the appeal body have some subject matter expertise in the technical codes, and part of the um, composition of the Emergency Preparedness and Safety Commission makes them such that they are uh, determined to be qualified to hear those types of appeals, and I think the idea is not to put it into a political realm, but to keep it into a, a technical realm for purposes of the appeals. When you look at the nature of the appeals uh, and how they're limited, they're to a technical misapplication of the code, essentially. And so having the decision-making body be competent in those issues, I think, is the real intent that's at issue here. OK, and then on package page 317, we had talked before about examples include barbecue-themed restaurants and pizza ovens. And it was the thought was, do we really need to have the examples in there? Can it just say? Yes, there's no binding language with respect to those examples. I think it was intended to provide some helpful context, but there's no need to have that if the council desires to delete it. I think my concern was that it be, would be interpreted as extensively aimed at them. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Done. Okay. Anybody else? We have a motion. I think so. I, it looks like Christine has left the, the room. Otherwise, I was going to follow up on uh, her comment on number five and number six, page 291 and 292. About the EV charging station? Well, the one was about the affordability one, which I, I think we need to incentivize affordable housing. So I wasn't as interested in that question. I actually didn't quite understand her um, question about the had something to do with costs on the number five on page 291. So I was kind of trying to go over it to see if I could figure out what she was referring to. Um, I think I can perhaps shed some light on both of those questions. Um, Thank you. So with respect to um, the question about the affordable housing exemption, as we discussed at the last city council meeting on that topic, it's an option for the affordable housing developer. It's not a mandate or an automatic exclusion, and if there's some cost basis that affects the ability, for example, to construct the affordable unit, I think the council was striking the balance on better to have the unit without EV parking than 
to have some requirement that sounds great, but results in not having housing constructed. Right. And as Mr. Reyes uh, from PCE also mentioned, in some cases for 100% affordable projects, there's also funding available from Peninsula Clean Energy. So there's also that offsetting funding source potentially. Uh, with respect to the um, cost question, it was with respect to the uh, geotechnical hazard uh, requirement. And it was, uh, there's a you know, potentially very high cost associated with some of these um, risk minimization measures, right? If they require large debris deflection walls or other site drainage that could be very costly relative to the project. The commenter was recognizing that it may be a very important risk reduction component to the project that is disproportionate because it costs X dollars, but there's only this very small primary project being proposed, and that could be, that could present risk to the community. That may be the case in consulting with Mr. McFan. We think there are very few circumstances where such a small project is likely to generate such a high risk. Uh, the potential exists, and we can't discount it entirely, but I think it's perhaps better to have that safeguard in terms of cost proportionality than to eliminate it and have the city subject to some sort of other infeasibility claim. Do we have a, um, if we identify such a genu genuine threat in the, the review process, do we have a mechanism by which we can necessitate um, that a costly measure is put in if, I, I appreciate it wouldn't be a de facto since we're not including it here, but if safety is identified, we can then say, do the safe thing, right? Uh, well, allow me to, to read the exception. And it's also, my, I appreciate my brain is hitting the late hour of the night. It's so. 1207. <laughs> no, I understand, no, Mayor I Pro Tem. <laughs> I heard you. Uh, I understand the, the concern. Uh, my need is to reflect on the language to, to see, um, and perhaps we can circle back to keep the meeting going, and I can chime in when I've Oh, I think an we're about ready to make a motion <laughs> after this okay. question. Well, that's the only outstanding issue, then. I'll, please just allow me a mo another moment to find that requirement. <laughs> okay, so there were a, a few little changes that we asked for, so make sure to include those in the... Uh, Motion, well, I'm, I'm please. Actual language, more Make a motion. Yeah, please. Um, to move to take the following actions introduced by title only and waive the first reading of the ordinance. Oh, sorry. Oh, of this. Well, we're not on TV anyway. Of the City Council, of the City of Pacifica, repealing and replacing chapters one, building code two, mechanical code three, plumbing code four, electrical code five, international property. Maintenance code, six energy code, seven build green, green building code, 7.5 residential code, eight historical buildings code, 8.5 existing buildings code, nine reference of standards code of title eight of the Pacifica Municipal Code to adopt by reference the 2022 California Building Standards California Code of Regulation Title 24. Parts one, two, two and a half, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, eleven, and twelve, and the 2021 International Property Maintenance Code, and making certain amendments thereto, and be replace, repealing and replacing Article One, Fire Code of Chapter Three, Fire Protection of the Title Four of the Pacifica Municipal Code, woo, to adopt the 2022 California Fire Code, and making certain amendments thereto. And C, finding adoption of the ordinance exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act, including the items that have been adjusted. And I so move. And setting the public and hearing. Set the hearing. And setting the public hearing for November 28, and, and 2022. And set a public hearing to consider adoption of the ordinance on November 28, 2022. And those amendments, Madam Mayor, uh, in, in brief, were to add or any other purpose to the non-residential all-electric building uh, conversion prohibition, deleting the word residential from 112.4.2b Romanet 2, and deleting the sentence in uh, the non-residential for-profit re restaurant exemption that the sentence beginning with examples include. Is that included in the motion? Yes. Yes. And 
Motion by Council Member Rotherloss, seconded by Council Member O'Neill. The uh, motion passes five to zero. Okay, okay, our meeting is adjourned. And if you want me to call Miss Torres so you can like miss first period, like. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs>